Drawing extreme perspective angles can feel really intimidating, but the principle is exactly the same as drawing any perspective angles and we shouldn't feel scared by it. I think the important thing is not to try and visualize how the various parts of the building would look if we were seeing it front on, but instead to visualize the architectural elements that we're drawing from an extreme angle, just as lines that connect at certain angles and as shapes that we need to put next to each other. If we do that, we'll observe what's actually there at the angle we're looking at, rather than the things that, that we know in our head. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you find this video on extreme perspective drawing helpful. And make sure you stay till the end because I apply the tone at the very end in the last minute or so and it really pops the way the whole facade looks. So please try and hang around till then. Okay, let's go. As always, it's really important to get these first perspective angles correct. But because this is an extreme perspective view, it's even more important and it's going to be even harder to really make these angles high enough much harder than you think. Even after all these drawings, my natural tendency is still to make the angle too low. So it's really important to use whatever means works and you can see what works for me to measure the angle. Then we start to just start again with a small section that we can draw accurately. And I'm using these, these five columns in a row in this section. And as you can see, I work along elements that are the same at the same time. So I can align them not just in size and shape, but also in my line work so that I create them using the same sorts of lines because I really do want them to look all the same. That's important with these architectural elements. The other trick here is to try and not think of windows or columns or anything, but to truly see all of these spaces between the columns is just filled with shapes and lines and to draw what's there, not try to see what it is. So we start this next section by repeating the three columns in the center directly above. So again, we want to make sure we get the perspective line really accurate. It's going to be slightly higher than the line underneath it because it's moving further away from eye level. And again, you can see I line up identical architectural elements in a row and I do them in a row bit by bit, bit by bit. So there's not just the shapes and the sizes that are the same, but even the way I've drawn the lines and the order I've drawn the lines and all of those things show in the end, they all become apparent in, in the finished drawing and help everything looks like looks really nice and repeated. And now I add these uh, architectural decorations, these obelisks on each side, and it's important with those to line the tops of them up on the same uh, perspective alignment. It's important that, that all the architectural details that line up on the horizontal in life line up on the perspective lines. Now this curved uh, arch at the top, it's tricky, it's so distorted, it's easy to get this wrong. It's really important to really study just what the, the arch is, not to think of a half circle, but to actually draw what's there. It's a bit of a challenge, that one. So we start now drawing the uh, sets of windows on either side of this center architectural piece. And it's, it's a similar situation that we had with the obelisk in that these two uh, windows on each side match up horizontally if we were to look at the building from the front. So it's important that all the details match up on the same perspective line. But again, in this case, because these are some distance apart on either side of our colonnaded centerpiece. It just takes a little more effort and attention and, and quite frankly work and observation to make sure that we get the angle right because the angles, because they're fairly extreme, they change a lot from one side of the, um, the colonnade to the other. And so it really does take some effort and attention and it's worth going as, as slow as we need to go to get it right, to get it accurately. I don't usually use a bit of paper like that, but it was just there and I thought, look, I really want to get this right. Working directly with ink, of course, is another reason to get it right. And again, it's 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 working hard to make sure that that we align it. Now, you can see that I, I didn't get those lines quite right on the extreme right up the top there. And I, I rearranged them a little bit until I was happy with them. Don't, don't leave wrong lines just because you've drawn them, even if you've drawn them in ink go over them until you get a line in the right place. The brain will favor the line that's in the correct place 
And the fact that you've got a wrong line written, uh, drawn there as well somewhere won't be as obvious because the brain will see that line which says the right thing. So always put the correct line in. And again, two more of these sort of arched uh, decorative caps on top. And again, it's important just to observe them because they don't look like half circles. So we have to draw what's there. So I find that drawing an extreme perspective facade like this is a bit like building a complex Lego model. It can look really impressive and, and, and intricate and detailed at the end, but really, you still only build it block by block by block. And it's exactly the same way with these drawings. It's just line by line, section by section, building on what we've drawn previous. And although it looks really complicated at the end, we were never doing more than one small part at a time. And if you're still with me now, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Are you finding the pace of the videos too fast or do you like them fairly sped up? I'd love to, to know that because I'm, I'm not so sure myself, have I got the speed of the fast drawing right or not. Anyway, let's apply the tone now and see how it looks. I start with a Copic N4 marker. This is a fairly high contrast scene. Everything's either full sunlight or casting quite strong shade. It is important in this sort of situation that we draw our lines accurately because there are a lot of very straight shadows here. So we just want to take some care with that uh, because there's not much room to fudge things. Look again, the same as when we draw the lines. If you notice, I, I'm, I'm doing architectural elements at the same level, either vertically or horizontally at the same time. It lets me draw them with the same type of stroke and it just really helps me to get them all identical or as identical as I, I possibly can. It's always a bit of a challenge to keep all the lines straight. Almost all of this is with an N4. Uh, I do the, the roofs with an N5. Uh, the window panes that are on the bottom right hand side, I, I use a, an N0 just to put a little bit of tone in them to separate them from the, the brickwork which is bare and there's uh, one or two bits of, of N3, but basically it's mostly N4. So the, the, the trick is, is to keep everything lined up and get nice sharp edges and corners and not to overdo it, but to make sure that we leave plenty of white to give the sunshine. And that's it. Well, thanks for hanging around till the very end. I hope you found this helpful. I hope it encourages you to try and draw a scene of extreme perspective angle. And if you do, make sure you have fun. See you next time.